Hello there, my friendly lovers of Warhammer Fantasy lore, and welcome to another video describing a facet of this world. Today's episode is gonna cover a more esoteric and unusual topic, but one that I hope will be very helpful in future episodes when I'm gonna talk about this or that event and even give its date. This topic is gonna be time itself, or rather how time is recorded by the humans of the Empire in the Old World. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about the unique names of the Empire's days, months and holidays, as well as how this method of timekeeping came to be. Also, apologies in advance for the lack of a lot of artworks in this one, but there really wasn't much to be had on the topic at hand. I am your usual host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Imperial Calendar, shall we? The Imperial Calendar is, duh, the official calendar of the Empire, and the usual metric used to describe events in the Warhammer world. It is centered around the year of Sigmar's coronation, which also counts as year zero. Also, if you don't know who Sigmar is, I will be talking about him quite a lot once I start videos on the Empire and its history. Until then though, it is safe if you just think of him as the founder of the Empire and a figure fairly close to Jesus. If Jesus was a badass who killed the worst imaginable enemies in order to help and save his future country. The Imperial Calendar is of great importance and influence in the Empire. It allows the common folk to count the passing days and prepare for the festivals. It also allows for historical events to be recorded and contextualized in time. It allows men who have never met to agree on a reliable date that both understand. In short, it is the cog around which the machinery of the Empire revolves. Without standardized, measured time, everything would soon collapse into confusion. Most people believe that the divine Sigmar, the first emperor who united the tribes of man, also formed the imperial calendar. The dating system splits the 400-day year into 12 months of 32 or 33 days, and includes six important festival days, each of which lies between the months. The months are further divided by eight-day weeks, which bridge the months uninterrupted even if a week is broken by one of the intercalary festivals. However, although Sigmar was involved with its creation in some manner, the truth of the calendar's genesis is more complex, and arguably even older than the Empire itself. The eight days of the week are Valentag, or Work Day, Aubentag, or Levy Day, Marktag, or Market Day, Bakertag, or Bake Day, Betzaltag, or Tax Day, Königstag, or King's Day, Angestag, or Start Week, and Festag, or Holiday. The reasons for these names are long forgotten, and probably originated in pre-Empire times. Nowadays, Market Day occurs on any day of the week, depending on which part of the Empire you are in and festivals and holidays take place according to the traditions of each cult. There is no weekly religious holiday, but everyone seizes the chance to celebrate at festival times. The 12 months of the year are Nahexan, or After Witching, Yardrung, or Year Turn, Pflugzeit, or Plotide, Sigmarzeit, or Sigmartide, Sommerzeit, or Summertide, Vorgeheim, or For Mystery, Nachgeheim, or After Mystery, Erntezeit, or Harvest Tide, Brauzeit, or Brew Month, Kaldezeit, or Chill Month, Ulrichzeit, or Ulrich Tide, and Vorhexen, or For Witching. The six extra days are Hexentag, or New Year's Day, or Witching Day, Mitterfrühl, or Start Grove, or Spring Equinox, Zonstil, or Summer Solstice, Geheimnistag, or Day of Mystery, Mitherbst, or Less Grove, or Autumn Equinox, and Monstil, World Still, or the Winter Solstice. 
three of the months mark the agricultural activities that occur at those times, plowing, harvesting, and brewing. The equinoxes and solstices mark the peak of each season, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Sigmar and Ulrich each have one month apiece dedicated to them. Sigmar's month dominates the onset of summer, while Ulrich's month falls in midwinter. This clearly demonstrates their opposing nature. Nobody knows what Sigmar's site was called in pre-Empire times, though some scholars surmise it was named after Tal. Both Ulrich and Tal are deities venerated in the Empire and beyond, and both of them predate Sigmar. Most of the original tribes which settled in the Reich Basin had no formal traditions for keeping time. Those that usually did relied upon the passage of celestial bodies across the sky to keep time for them. Although planets and stars were sometimes used for this, many early tribesmen observed the regular orbit of Mansleib and the eternal cycle of spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Mansleib, if you don't know, is one of the two moons that exist in the world of Warhammer fantasy. This eventually led some communities to understand time as four seasons of four lunar cycles, but few used a system which was even that complex. As there was no central authority in those early days, each tribal community formed its own traditions for understanding time, often drawing inspiration from their neighbors, conquerors, and the ruins of the elder races these being the dwarves or elves for the most part. By the time of Sigmar, many conflicting and often inaccurate methods of recording time already existed. So many and so different were these, that misunderstandings between early humans were common, and sometimes even a source of conflict. The holy texts of the Sigmarites claim that Sigmar himself decided to end this problem. Sigmar is supposed to have understood the importance of a centrally organized calendar. However, the people of Sigmar were primitive, and though they could observe the seasons and the passing of various celestial bodies, they little understood how to accurately record the passage of time. Those few societies that did mark time rarely celebrated anything beyond the great equinoxes of the seasons, and often relied upon obscure rituals and the alignments of ancient standing stones to do even this. Unsurprisingly, most humans of the time couldn't even accurately tell how old they were. As Sigmar was unable to draw upon established human calendars or knowledgeable scholars, he turned to the oldest and strongest allies of the humans, the wise and ancient dwarves, and asked for their counsel. The calendar reputedly created by Sigmar and his advisors drew almost all of its inspiration from the millennia-old dwarven calendar. The six dwarven festivals, which were already celebrated in most corners of the nascent empire under different names, were kept unchanged, and the months were simply renamed, where necessary, to be more applicable to human life. Not only was this seen as a simple and convenient solution, but it also ensured that dwarves and humans would forever be bound together in a mutual understanding of the passage of time strengthening their growing relationship into the future. However, just because a calendar was centrally created didn't mean that everyone immediately used it. Indeed, in those very early times, very few actually did. Instead, they continued practicing their local and often inaccurate tradition. To this day, over 2,500 years later, it is still common to find isolated communities that only use variations of the imperial calendar, or even ignore it entirely. The dwarves had no smaller division of the month except for the day itself. They referred to each day by its number, from the 1st to the 33rd, and that was that. However, most human tribes grouped days together in short clumps to help organize their short busy lives, most commonly to plan their frequent market days. Further, many couldn't even count as far as 33. Thus, Sigmar realized that he would have to do further than the old dwarven calendar alone. Sigmar had the cults and noble bloodlines of the tribes report to him the methods used by their peoples to record the short passages of days. He was overwhelmed by the diversity of the responses. 
The most common grouping for days was the so-called week a number of days, typically from 3 to 12, between one local market day and the next one. However, there were many other groupings. These included the Fünftag, a five-day period generated from the solar cycle, as in five weeks of five days in one full passage of Mansleib. The Vierzehnnacht, a 14-day period, supposedly based upon the time the Andals believed they could withstand a siege, and the Zenigd, a seven-day period, with each day assigned to a different god, although the gods whose names were used would vary wildly, and many, many more. So, rather than embroil himself with months of debate and pointless conflict about how to best split the months, Sigmar fell back on his own traditions. Sigmar's tribe, the Unberogans, did use the term weak, and had a unique grouping of four weeks called the Zext Day, a 16-day period of obscure origin. However, knowing that the warlike Teutogens might easily take offense at a blanket enforcement of Unberogan terms, Sigmar also drew upon the Teutogen Vohe, a period of eight days reputedly ordered by Ulrich. As Sigmar himself was a devout follower of Ulrich, it seemed obvious to him to marry all of this for his new imperial calendar. And from these foundations, the eight-day imperial week was created. Each day was given a unique name, chosen from the great selection of day names used across the new empire. These names bore little relevance to the actual use of the day in practice, for any day could be a work day or a bake day but they provided comforting continuity for folk that used those terms. Of course, even though the Empire recorded all official documents using the Imperial Week, most of the tribes continued using their older terms for the days and their groupings. Indeed, even 2500 years later, some distant parts of the Empire still use archaic methods for counting the passing days, weeks, months, and seasons. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Imperial Calendar for today. I do hope you enjoyed learning about these things as much as I did putting it all together. I also hope that this knowledge will be helpful in future videos, especially those detailing the Empire and its major events, and even other major events from other races, because those are usually recorded and mentioned from the perspective of the Imperial Calendar as well. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more content. And if you'd like to help me keep making these videos, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. I thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.